right, every single week, the great search brought to you by DigiKey and Lady Ada. She uses all her powers of engineering to show you how to search for things on digikey.com. Okay, and don't forget, if uh, in, in this year of uh, part shortages, if there's a part you're looking for, an alternative, let me know. I will uh, I'll help you out find an alternative uh, component. Um, but this week, um, I, you know, I was working on this rotary encoder breakout board, and this is kind of a standard Borns PEC 11 rotary encoder with a little switch in it. And I wanted to make a version of this board that was not a rotary encoder, but a potentiometer. So rotary encoder, you know, it goes all the way around, round, 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 but you don't know where you are, right? All you know is, is whether you've gone forward or backwards one. You have to kind of count the, the clicks. Whereas a potentiometer, it doesn't go all the way around. Uh, it only goes, here, let me see if I could remove this. Uh, potentiometer doesn't go all the way around. It goes, you know, minimum, maximum. So you can't go around more than, I think, you know, usually 270 or 300 degrees. Yeah, you know, almost a full circle, but not quite. Um, you do know where you are, which is kind of nice. Like, you know exactly what position you're at. Uh, they're nice and smooth, but you don't get that full rotation. So, you know, there's times when you want uh, a rotary encoder for full rotation. And there's times when you want potentiometer because you want to know what position you are, like 50%, 25%, 75% from a maximum. Um, so the uh, rotary encoder bodies that we're, we're used to are these square bodies. There's a switch uh, and then the three pins. We're not going to find something that's probably the same. They're, they're very similar looking, but they're not quite the same size body. And that's okay. Um, there are standard size bodies for rotary encoders are about 12 millimeters, you know, 12.5 millimeters. And for potentiometers, they're, you know, about nine millimeters, 10 millimeters uh, square body. And that's just sort of a standardish size. That said, uh, do watch out, potentiometers do vary quite a bit um, from, uh, from type to type. Uh, there's almost more variation, I find, in potentiometer sizes than rotary encoders. A lot of people really they make rotary encoders, they make them in this standard size. The, the length of the knob may change, whether it's panel mount or not, but the overall shape and pinout is the same. Potentiometers, I found quite a bit of variation. So let's take a look. We want a, a low cost, linear 10K resistor uh, without a detent in the center. Okay, very bog standard potentiometer that will PCB solder into our breakout like so and uh, gives a nice strong mechanical connection, especially having these uh, side nubs. Okay. All right, you wanna go to your computer? Yeah, let's go to my computer. So let's go to DigiKey. Oh, while we're at it, I was, I was um, you know, one of the things I was, I was looking at when I was searching on uh, DigiKey is, um, if you look for potentiometer, uh, you'll see potentiometers in rheostats and like you might be wondering, like, what's a rheostat? I was like, yeah, what is a rheostat? A rheostat is a um, adjustable value resistor, which is different than a potentiometer. A potentiometer, right, has the top and the bottom, and then the middle goes between the two. So you do have a you know a variable resistor, right? But it's only like you got two variable resistors: the bottom half and the top half. Whereas a rheostat is only two pins. And as you turn it, the resistance changes. So not good for voltage divider, but much, but good for uh, changing how much current is going through something or um, uh, the bias uh, load or whatever of your device. So in our case, we're looking for a potentiometer, but they do often get categorized with rheostats. But rheostat, two pin, potentiometer, three pin. We want three pin. So uh, I will say that there's a, you know, a couple uh, other options. There's thumb wheel potentiometer. Uh, trim a potentiometer. Um, trim potentiometer is, is tricky because it's like when, you know, which, which one do you want and when. So uh, trimmer pots are almost always these surface mount components. They can be through hole, but they tend to be uh, surface mount or through hole and they're small. And you use a screwdriver to adjust the value. That they're, they're the same idea, but there isn't like a knob that you twist. Uh, usually, usually it's like a little, you can see here, like a screwdriver end. Use your screwdriver and you use to twist it. So these are for, uh, they're called trimmers because they are used to trim a value, right? You you want to adjust a voltage and it's, you know, you want to tweak it a little bit because there's variations. Um, the trimmer will let you uh, 
tweak it where, and then you set it and forget it. You don't have, it's not something that users are constantly messing with. Um, and so for, um, there are some cases which we'll want trimmers. Maybe one day we'll go and do a, a trimmer potentiometer video. But um, for now, we're, we're not looking for a trimmer. We want something with a knob. So that's, that's the difference. Um, there's the slide potentiometers. Again, you know, that's the, the kind I showed earlier in this video. It's, it's uh, you slide it up and down. We're not looking for that. We're looking for rotary. Okay. So what's interesting to me is actually there aren't as many potentiometers as I thought. There's only 10,000 different potentiometers, which is a lot, but like not as many as I would have imagined considering how often they're used. I think there's like a lot of like uh, standards. So let's go with active potentiometers. And then let's go with normally stocking. Now, usually I would pick uh, in stock, but because there's so many part shortages, um, I'm going to go with normally stocking and then, you know, we'll see what we, what comes up and if necessary, we can, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll order um, a variation on it. So for resistance ohms, so there's a lot of resistance values available for potentiometers, but I'm going to select 10K. And here's the thing, it doesn't actually matter for my use case what the resistance is because I'm doing a voltage divider. So it could be anywhere from 1K to 100K. However, any potentiometer that's made is going to be available in 10K. It's just such a standard value that what I want to do is, is find like the series, the family of potentiometers. I'll search for 10K. And then if it happens to be out of stock, I can always get the 5K or 100 or whatever. But 10K is like the, the, the standard, gold standard potentiometer values. So let's go with 10K. All right, so next up, uh, number of turns. So um, if you have a precision potentiometer, you can get one that they turn more. It, it's like a screw, basically. It still doesn't go around forever. Eventually, you do run out of, of turns. Um, it's mostly a precision thing. You spend more for it. Um, I'm looking for something simple, low cost, just you know, twist back and forth. So I'm going to go with one turn. So that really cuts down the number of, um, of uh, availability. Uh, next up is number of gangs. It's like, is this, is this part of like a crew? No. The number of gangs is how many potentiometers are ganged up on top of each other, like stacked up to make a, um, you know, like if you have a, a, a double gang, that means you can do stereo, right? Because you can adjust two voltages at the same time. Again, in this case, it's not necessary, but I will, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, so this is a, a two gang. So see how there, it looks like, it's like literally looks like just two potentiometers stacked up on top of each other. Um, with six holes total. Those are two independent potentiometers ganged on top. Um, again, you know, this is useful. Often it's two for stereo. So you have a left channel, right channel, uh, and you twist this and you'd be changing both channels at the same time. But uh, like I said, you know, then this is another a, a double gang one, but this one is through hole. It's very cool, but um, again, we're not, we don't need that. So let's go with a single gang. Okay, so now we're down to 300. So adjustment type, rear, side, top, user defined. I want the top adjust standard. I'm also gonna select the, the, the dash just in case you know something is, is not fully categorized. Um, side adjust, by the way, is like this. You know, it comes out, you, you put on the PCB, it comes out uh, perpendicular. And um, this is also perpendicular. Let me see if I can find, this is, there's a lot of perpendicular ones. This is a top adjust. Right, so if on the PCB, it's on the top, and that's what I'm looking for. So let's search for uh, top adjust. And then taper, linear logarithmic, reverse logarithmic. Um, logarithmic is used for audio applications or sometimes um, biasing applications where you need to, where you don't want the resistance to be linear. In my case, I do want it to be linear. I want the 50% point to be 50%, not 10%, one or the other. So I'm going to pick uh, linear taper. Okay, great. So we're now down to only 90 or so options. Um, okay, so then, you know, we're starting to look, okay, this, this is kind of a, a weird one. Uh, this is kind of also a little bit unusual. I want something like this. This looks like a good potentiometer. Or like this one. But this is a, a multiple pins. You see how many pins there are. I only want one um, potentiometer. I don't know if that's possible to say. Oh, for switches. Detent. Uh, detent is the center, so sometimes, especially if you're uh, doing audio applications where you want left and right balance, the center will have a detent so people can tell when you're at 50%. 
Um, in my case, I, I don't want either of these. I don't want a switch. I just want a plain um, potentiometer. Um, and then uh, surface mount, DIN rail, panel mount, through hole. In this case, I want through hole and also panel mount. Why panel mount? Sometimes they're categorized as panel mount if they have panel mount um, bushing, and they are also through hole. So in that case, you really, you really do want all, all three options to, to get everything that can solder into a PCB. Um, okay, so then, yeah, so this is like panel mount because it really does look like it's a panel mount, but uh, this would also be considered panel mount and this would also be considered panel mount even though you see it's a through hole potentiometer. All right, so um, let's see. Next, next up, let's look at uh, PC pins versus solder lug. Solder lug would be a panel mount that doesn't plug into a PCB, so I want the PC pins. And then for actuator type, you know, remember we talked with uh, rotary encoders, um, there's T18, 18 tooth, and there's flatted. Those are the two most common for rotary encoders. Now, it turns out that for potentiometers, there's even more options. Um, including um, this kind, which is, sorry, there's slotted. Sorry, this kind, which is slotted. Here you go. So you see at the top, there's a little, it's actually, this is, a, I would normally consider this a trim pot, but it's under potentiometers. I don't want slotted. I want something that fits the large knobs. So I want flatted or knurled. Or not on slide or knob. I think those are those are good, but I don't want slots. I want I want ones that look like this. There you go. So this, now we're talking about like standard potentiometers. This one is a T eighteen. Uh, this one you see is a uh, is a flattened uh, a D a D shaft. This is also I think a D shaft. This also looks like a D shaft. Okay, so now we're we're kind of at the point where we can. Um, Looking more, nothing else here is really that important to me. So now let's look at uh, pricing. Let's just sort by price. So this is kind of the potentiometer that we stock. It's standard, this very inexpensive round bodied one. I actually don't want this because um, see, it's exposed. I like the ones that are a little bit more sealed. It won't make a huge difference um, if it's be an, an enclosure, um, but for, for my purposes, I, I don't. I'm a little nervous about having it exposed. So let's look at this one. Um, okay, so let's look at the data sheet. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is a, a kind of standard potentiometer. It looks like it's, you know, it's available in two lengths and two styles, that's not so bad. Although this one has a, uh, it's a little short bodied. I kind of like the look of this one. This is a, uh, a Bournes uh, one, and one thing I really like about it is it's got 6,000 stock, it's kind of nice. So let's check this out. Looks good, remember it's got the T18, looks like, or otherwise knurled, knurled top. Um, not sure actually that is T18. I might have to grab some and then compare it to a, a potential. It looks like it has even more neurals than, than normal. So I'll probably get a couple of these. This one's pretty good. So I'll keep that one. And then, uh, oh, I like this one too. This one looks good. A couple hundred in stock. This one has a D shaft. So I'm probably going to get a couple of each. Um, they're really inexpensive, you know, they're 50 cents a piece or so. Um, potentiometers are like, thankfully, very inexpensive. I think I'm going to, um, I'm gonna start with this one because I like that it's kind of like the most popular potentiometer on, uh, on DigiKey. So this is what I'm gonna start with, the uh, PTV series, 10K ohm carbon linear. And, you know, start with this. And again, the physical sizes of all these are very similar. Um, I'll pick this and then I'll find um, the uh, shaft length and type that I like. But so far, this looks really good. I like it. It's, it's got a sealed uh, connection here. It's got uh, a nice body with, with two um, mounting slots and uh, a fairly 
uh, good sized uh, actuator. So this is, this is my great search pick, the PTV 09A series. All right, that's a great search. That's right. Where in the world is